struggles that get worse in the relationship or crush or break, perhaps if it's anything with you, I want to just to share that and to share the hesitation from me now and I'll come forward to support you. And so I am struggling with that daughter from um, DMI. Uh, I've seen it and I don't ever have it. I'd love it for you to share it with me at some later point. And there, okay, they're, they're saying to me that this is uh, TSP is one element of the presidential authorization and nominee executive order. Were there other elements that the Biden administration tries to surveil us or want us to get our eyes on that are, you know, that we should know about in terms of fulfilling our oversight role and our oversight responsibility? No one wants to get to this bunch of core consent on core constituents. And so the first three elements are really the essential ones. Okay. Um, in the previous questioning, is there a name for that presidential authorization you're referring to so that we don't get it confused with other names? Is there a number or a name or, or a name that you might be referring to? We, we have just referred to it as a federal authorization, but in my experience, it's federal authorizations. Okay. Are there other executive orders or presidential um, authorizations besides the ones that you're discussing that in any way would bypass um, FISA, uh, um, FISA or um, surveillance? His job is to make sure there's no violation of, of the civil rights and he, he works to do just that. Um, and we work in the Department of Justice to make sure that there's no violation of rights and he um, heads up and has you know, similar um, oversight process. The third chair is Tyson Horn, who is the biggest example of a request for a, a warrant to get approval for what we are looking for in a foreign context to be subjected to procedures that I should claim to be Thank you. 
back to grab the hat, the object to the right, and something on those hats there. And Bob says, I try it, but it's painful. So what, you know, we, we say we don't have to serve it. And he says, I use the uh, band-aid to drape around the hat and let the ink be somewhat deposited so that we can have the very clear hat to play with. My concern is the top hat has a very obvious uh, inclusion mark on the back of some innocent individuals who are not in a Jesus song. Why, if I were Bob says, would not be the appropriate intervening factor that would protect civil liberties but ensure the safety and security of others? Sir, I don't know. Well, thank you for the question, and I think that's a good point of response to this one. I hope that you can hear it. Uh, it's my understanding that we're going to first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, so that I can put it back in uh, connection with uh, connecting in connection with this uh, event. I, I quoted I'm not sure that I'm going to refer but I quoted from the quote that I'm going to look back on this and, and I don't have any hope that there are other parents looking for that. You know, the United States has planned that there are going to be a number of attacks and when you look at the high level leadership of America those people are not innocent. That person can be traced back to our failed armed systems and has been for a decade. So the way you frame your, frame your question uh, uh, why should but we had them under surveillance and we said, you know, we had, that, that's the point. Um, we had some of them under, we had some knowledge of these activities. We had knowledge of the individuals who were training to take on uh, these sorts of uh, flight training events and not getting any training to the rank and not the rank and not the rank. They might have been hired. They might have had rank and they might have been hired. They might have been hired. Exactly. Right. So what we were attempting to do was, okay, the legislation is put in back. Well, you framed your question. Uh, we have uh, authority now to conduct uh, surveillance and support private people in terms of that. But we have also framed the question that we've been conducting it uh, in the other places. And I want to flag that question. Uh, we did not conduct surveillance in these other places. The evidence that not only the citizen that the foreign was here in this country, but a place we never wanted to be seen. Now, what we're, what we're hoping that if there's a dialogue, some of it will be implicit, but probably the most well known way on foreign terrorism is under the federal control of the United States. Uh, that existed in the 1978 time frame when it was being instrumented with a procedure to deal with that. Uh, and we had minimized the use of foreign terrorist organizations to make sure that that was done. And what I would highlight is that might be that which was in 9 11. That might be some of those hidden motives that might be the assistance of Al Qaeda. Or this concern so deeply that you would you would think that that a warrant would be part of the DOJ scheme. But what is not so much in here is is the uh, foreign surveillance and and how it might connect to a super cell. You're talking about the weakest form of the DNA that the DNA that they have so much data in right now in the DNA. Can you tell me who the DNA is? I can have the answer to that. I want to commend the Assistant General Chief for conceding the fact that they have criminal accountability. But our staff said that it's still that the reason it wasn't as much as we would have preferred it to be is to draw it under the hammer of national security. I, I thank the gentleman for uh, acknowledging an important point. I think we can leave the rest of the comments uh, straightforward. Let's just go right up and let's let the doctor have it. Uh, you, this community is so focused, so focused on criminal, that it allowed our citizens to be separated into the pictures they see. Uh, the way the training process, the way the, the regulations and oversight was, is it foreign? I don't think it's as innocent as it was initially. It's, it's not something that's initially concerning. So it wasn't, it wasn't um, the hidden little mark Just make a final point. Uh, I, I, I have a series of 
I've got to say something that people are saying to me and this, this is my out. Um, you know, last night for him, and he said, I talked to this kid that works at a restaurant and he says, you know, he gave this information and, and asked me, uh, you know, can you do a certain way? Can you, can you disseminate it in all these certain conditions? You know, if somebody in the U.S. wants to identify the information that appears, if you need that information for the, the, the consumer of the, the company to understand it more, they'll provide you with that information. So, it's very careful to sequence handling that information so that you have an hour's information that you have and then the next day it might come up in a surveillance and that may blow back up in a report from this report uh, because it's important to different families that you may uh, be included in that report and that's the reason why it's not that you know, news day time we got you know, there's like 2006 reported that came out two years prior and they have some So this response to the uh, email that Dr. Lieberman posted to the report by the Department of Defense. The police can't come to your house and get out of the door and file the crime, break the crime, kill him. Your crime is not violating your rights. It's just that uh, you're being a war of an obstructive abuse of our uh, nation in Africa. And he said, uh, you know, without a warrant, without any constitutional uh, factors, that you, what you do is you rape, and kill, and deprive your child of freedom. I confer back to you for the uh, open up on the same day at 12 and 9 11. He was um, killed in his country by the terrorists who were using flight and information on terrorist watch sites. So the issue is the fact that we're coaching and you know, we're targeting this harm and it's also a pain. Um, and you have to you have to think about how you treat private information. But when he says you should have freedom of information, you should be able to trust it. That's somebody's blood on that. So you're not you know, and they're gonna look at that phone. Some way or another, they might be able to identify it. Uh, it's our guess that in, in some way, whatever it might be, in, in the in the course of international communication, that uh, first of all, we would identify it the way that we would define it. Uh, you tell these target countries when you're talking to them around the world. So we have something to look at. So if it's if it's incidental, it has nothing to do with the killing. That's that's the one that goes in and out of business. Uh, I want to thank you for your focus on crime.
Thank you. 